There was uh, recently a post on the 116 Trophy um, Facebook forum asking about cameras. In particular, it was a question about whether the cheap £40 cameras that you can get on Amazon are suitable for a race car. I haven't really got an opinion on whether they are or aren't, um, but this did prompt me to just uh, share with you the setup in my own car. So the first thing is that my forward facing camera is just there and you'll perhaps recognize it as an AIM Smarty Cam. And it's linked to my data logger. And uh, if we put the power on in the car, you'll see that, uh, let's have a look, yeah, it comes on. So the data logger comes on. And as soon as the data logger comes on, it instructs the camera. As you can see, it's come on. The camera starts recording when the data logger starts recording. So whatever parameters you've got set for the data logger, the camera will record um, to keep uh, you know the video file and the data file aligned. So that's my Ford setup. The one thing I would say, that there are two things about this setup. Uh, the advantages are that the stream, the video stream you get off the camera has, you can overlay the picture with things like rev counter, brake position, throttle position, uh, G-forces, you know, lateral and uh, longitudinal G-forces. Um, I think those those are the ones I've got. Uh, oh, I've got gear as well, calculated gear. So that's the advantage. The downside is they are very expensive. I can't remember exactly how much, but it's like high hundreds of pounds. Um, I've no idea why they are so expensive. I think it's just because you're a bit of a captive audience. If you've got the AIM data logger, then obviously if you want the overlay, um, then they've sort of got you. But I have to say, the thing has never let me down. Now let's talk about the rear-facing camera. So I have this. It's an Olfi 1.5 Black. They are, I looked on the website um, this morning and they're listed at £149.99, so £150. I've found this really good. It is a bit more pricey, obviously, than the cheaper £40 alternatives. And I can quite understand why someone might just go for the cheaper one. Um, but I saw a number of reviews of this camera um, and I've been impressed with it, quite honestly. So you can see that it's got this. This is a standard roll cage adapter for this camera. Now, I can't remember if it comes. I'll, I'll, I'll drop a a note into the video here. I can't remember if the roll cage thing comes with the camera standard or if it was an additional um, purchase. I've got a feeling I paid £30 for the additional bits. I don't know. I'll have a look and I'll drop that in here. Then the other thing you can see coming out of it is this uh, USB uh, connector. So it's one of these sorts, small little USB connector. And that is a long cable that goes right across, down the side, across the floor. And actually it goes to my front, uh, to my console, my center console. And perhaps you can see it there, the cable looping up into where the, um, uh, the lighter is, the lighter adapter. So let's go and have a look at that bit. What I have here is, a, a, you know, one of those, uh, you see them all the time, advertised lighter to USB adapters. Now, they're not all equal, I can tell you. I bought a really cheap one to start with. And what I found was it wouldn't deliver enough current to keep up with the, um, the camera. And so what happened was the camera would run out of charge um, before the end of the race. Because we, we race for 90 minutes, just in case you're not a 116 Trophy racer. Uh, but this one that I've got here, and I will drop a link for this into the um, in into the video. Uh, this one is, I think it's a 3 amp adapter. 
I think the camera takes about one and a half amps and this is a three amp adapter and I've not had a problem with it ever since I put this adapter in. It's It's been as good as gold. One of the problems you might see on videos, and I've suffered it myself, is basically the view through the screen burns out and you can hardly see the cars because everything's just burnt out. You can see all of the inside of the car perfectly, <laughs> so the dash all shows perfectly. But uh, as soon as you look through the, uh, the picture through the windscreen, it looks terrible. And same at the back. Now what you need to look for is the exposure setting. On the AIM camera, you can uh, position, it's, it's got auto exposure adjustment, but it will do it in a small little window. And what you do is you position that window um, within the frame of the picture. So you need to make sure that the window is fully inside the part of the picture that's looking out through the uh, windscreen. And if you do that, that solves that problem. There's a similar thing on the Olfi camera. I can't exactly remember the details. Um, maybe that's something I should drop in here. Yeah, there's there's an exposure setting for the Olfi camera. I know there is on the GoPros as well because uh, I, ha I helped um, Matt Hycock sent, set up one of his uh, GoPros. I think he's got a Hero 3 and um, he was having a similar problem with the picture being burnt out and we managed to get it to uh, to show properly um, by uh, changing that exposure setting. So this rear camera, the one thing I haven't covered about this rear camera is when, how do I switch it on and when does it come on? Well actually I've configured it to come on as soon as it detects power through the uh, USB cable. So let me show you that. So unfortunately, <laughs> my data logger comes in on as soon as I apply, apply power to the car, which is not actually what I wanted, but um, it's, a, it's an outstanding issue I've got to deal with. But if I um, turn the camera around and we look at the Olfi, the back of the Olfi camera, if you can see it there. Now, what I'll do is I'll switch the ignition on and then I'll press the start button, not start the actual engine. And we should see, there you go. So now you can see the camera starting. It starts pretty quickly and you can see the little red light flashing, hopefully, and you can see it's actually already recording. So um, that makes it fairly hands-free. I did have it set up so that it was my job to plug the camera in uh, when I started to race, but of course I forgot. <laughs> so um, this is a much better setup. Um, I quite like this. Everything now in the car is uh, completely automatic. I don't start the front facing camera and I don't start the rear facing camera. They all start automatically. And then just to complete the story, I, I didn't record this happening, but as soon as I turn the uh, ignition off, the camera stops, I think it's within 15 seconds, although you can program that, you can make it run for longer if you if you prefer. Needless to say, I've got it set up so that it meets all the legal, you know, all the regulation requirements um, and also meets my needs in terms of producing race report videos. All right, I hope you found that useful and uh, look forward to speaking to you on the next one.